Hey, this is me, Kirpanjit Kaur, and welcome to my podcast in which I will be narrating you a short paragraph, or we can say part taken from the diary of Ian Frank. I know most people like to read the diary of Ian Frank, but you can listen to all the parts of the diary in my podcast. So today is the episode about school story of Ian Frank, where she gets a lot of extra homework from her teacher. I would be narrating on behalf of Ian Frank. Be with me till the end. Writing in a diary is a really strange experience for someone like me. Not only because I've never written anything before, but also because it seems to me that later on neither I nor anyone else will be interested in the musings of 13-year-old school girl. Oh well, it doesn't matter. I feel like writing and I have an even greater need to get all kinds of things off my chest. Paper has more patience than people. I thought of this saying on one of those days when I was feeling a little depressed and was sitting at home with my chin in my hands, bored and listless, wondering whether to stay in or go out. I finally stayed where I was, brooding. Yes, paper does have more patience. And since I'm not planning to let anyone else read this stiff-packed notebook, grandly referred to as a diary. Unless I should ever find a real friend, it probably won't make a bit of difference. Now I'm back to the point that prompted me to keep a diary in the first place. I don't have a friend. Let me put it more clearly, since no one will believe that a 13-year-old girl is completely alone in the world. And I am not. I have loving parents and a 16-year-old sister. And there are about 30 people I can call friends. I have a family, loving aunts, and a good home. No, on the surface, I seem to have everything except my one new true friend. All I think about when I'm with friends is having a good time. I can't bring myself to talk about anything but ordinary everyday things. We don't seem to be able to get any closer, and that is the problem. Maybe it's my fault that we don't confide in each other. In any case, there's just how things are, and unfortunately, they're not liable to change. This is why I have started this diary. To enhance the image of this long-awaited friend in my imagination, I don't want to jot down the facts in this diary the way most people would do. But I want the diary to be my friend, and I'm going to call this friend Kitty. Since no one would understand a word of my stories to Kitty, if I were to plunge right in, I'd better provide a brief sketch of my life, much as I dislike doing so. My father, the most adorable father I've ever seen, didn't marry my mother until he was 36 and she was 25. My sister Margot was born in Frankfurt in Germany in 1926. I was born on 12 June 1929. I lived in Frankfurt until I was four. My father immigrated to Holland in 1933. My mother, Edith Hollander Flank, went with him to Holland in September, while Margot and I were sent to Aachen to stay with our grandmother. Margot went to Holland in December, and I followed in February. When I was plunged down on the table as a birthday present for Margot, I started right away at the Montessori Nursery School. I stayed there until I was six, and which time I started in the first form. In the sixth form, my teacher was Mrs. Cupress, the headmistress. At the end of the year, we were both in tears as we said a heartbreaking farewell. In the summer of 1941, Grandma fell ill and had to have an operation. So my birthday passed with little celebration. Grandma died in January 1942. No one knows how often I think of her and still love her. This birthday celebration in 1942 was intended to make up for the other and Grandma's candle was lit along with the rest. The four of us are still going well and that brings me to the present day of 20 June 1942 and the Solomon dedication of my diary. Saturday, 20 June, 1942. Dearest Kitty, our entire class is quacking in its boots. The reason, of course, is the forthcoming meeting in which the teachers decide 
who will move up to the next form and who will be kept back. Half the class is making bets. Gian and I laugh ourselves silly at the two boys behind us, Cian and Jake, who have staked their entire holidays saving on their bet. From morning to night, it's, you're going to pass. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I am not. Even Jean's pleading glances and my angry outbursts can't claim them down. If you ask me, there are so many dummies that about a quarter of the class should be kept back. But teachers are the most unpredictable creatures on the earth. I'm not so worried about my girlfriends and myself. We'll make it. The only subject I'm not sure about is maths. Anyway, all we can do is wait. Until then, we keep telling each other not to lose heart. I get along pretty well with all my teachers. There are nine of them, seven men and two women. Mr. Kiesing, the old foggy teacher who teaches maths, was annoying with me for ages because I talked so much. After several warnings, he assigned me extra homework, an essay on the subject, a chatterbox. A chatterbox? What can you write about that? I'd worry about that later, I decided. I jotted down the title in my notebook, tugged it in my bag, and tried to keep quiet. That evening, after I'd finished the rest of my homework, the note about the essay caught my eye. I began thinking about the subject while chewing the tip of my fountain pen. Anyone could, anyone could ramble on and leave big spaces between the words. But the trick was to come up with convincing arguments to prove the necessity of talking. I thought and thought and suddenly I had an idea. I wrote three pages Mr. Kiesing had assigned me and was satisfied. I argued that talking is a student's trait and that I would do my best to keep it under control. But that I would never be able to cure myself of this habit since my mother talked as much as I did, if not more, and that there is not much you can do about inherited traits. Mr. Kiesing had a good laugh at my arguments, but when I proceeded to talk my way through the next lesson, he assigned me a second essay. This time, it was supposed to be on an incorrigible chatterbox. I handed it in, and Mr. Kiesing had nothing to complain about for two whole lessons. However, during the third lesson, he had finally had enough. In Frank, as punishment for talking in class, write an essay entitled Quack, 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 said Mistress Cheddarbox. The class wrote, I had to laugh too, though I had nearly exhausted my ingenuity on the topic of chatterboxes. It was time to come up with something else, something original. My friend Sane, who's good at poetry, offered to help me write the essay from beginning to end in verse, and I jumped for joy. Mr. Teasing was trying to play a joke on me with this ridiculous subject, but I'd make sure the joke was on him. I finished my poem, and it was beautiful. It was about a mother duck and a father's man with three baby ducklings who were bitten to death by the father because they quacked too much. Luckily, Mr. Kiesing took the joke the right way. He read the poem to the class, adding his own comments, and to several other classes as well. Since then, I've been allowed to talk and haven't been assigned any extra homework. On the contrary, Mr. Kiesing's always making joke these days. Yours, Anne. I hope so. My podcast helped you to pass your time when bored. Thank you for listening. Stay healthy and stay happy.